to amen your Kairos time to say oh this one plan I didn't even plan this this morning come on I feel you moving I feel you moving uh, come on come on come on Mary leap come on Mary leap leap Elizabeth make this leap and this leap in other words I feel a connection come on leap I feel a connection oh everything inside of me is leaping it's moving it's shaking it's getting ready to come my hour is about to come that y'all will see me in a greater glory the greater glory is upon me because what I'm getting ready to release it was worth my human hands human hands tried to make me appointed but the hands of God is upon me to break out
happened is spiritual birthing has almost become a lost art because of man-made legalism and traditionalism that said there is no such thing and so it became a lost art and so people got calcified babies in them they hard as bricks right they struggle to do right because if you can help me birth this it'll make room for something else
cannot let no one. And if you ought to just turn your cell phone off, don't get your text because you don't need nothing to interrupt your moment right now. Come on. Don't let anything interrupt your moment of what's getting ready to happen. Because when I look over there at that broken man, I see new ministry. I see my boutique. Oh, y'all don't want to talk. See, sometimes you need a physical demonstration in the earth that can be a type to show you what you're about to come into. Let me just, while we're right here, keep it right there. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. How many of you in here have ever heard of spiritual birthing? Look at A.I.T. Don't raise your hand. If you ever heard of spiritual birthing, okay, that's with all of these. Listen, if you heard of it last year and you hadn't heard it before, then keep your hand down. If you heard it last year. But if you've never heard of spiritual birthing, with all of us in here, can I just raise your hand? That is too many people not perfect. If only seven people could raise their hand on all of us in here, then guess what? We need to catch up on God's agenda. Some things became a lost part in the church. And so now God is, what he's doing is he's bringing people forth that will introduce us back to what was originally ours in the beginning. Come on, Mary, talk to me. How Mary gonna have a baby and baby still touched by a man? If you're trying to figure it out with your natural abilities and your natural and then human intellect, it'll mess you up. No, she was impregnated by when the angel of the Lord came to her. She was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Mary, you're going to break out a son that's going to be a savior to the world. Give me two minutes. I promise y'all we're going to spend. To give me two to three. Because one of the things of this right here, if you have no understanding, you will try to birth something and there will be no lasting of it. Because if you birth it, you must then know how to mature it, how to maintain it. So we don't, we don't birth off of just a hype or something. We birth off of knowing the purpose for why I birthed it. I promise you, if I would have listened to people, I wouldn't be right here. I'd never birth things out. And even when I start talking about people, people's like looking at you like crazy, like this, that ain't real. You ain't real. But you know what? I stay committed to what I know God has shown me. I, I'm, I'm staying true to the calling that God has called me to. Listen, I don't try to get in no. I, one thing, listen. This you see this say birth master, right? Birth master. It say surgeon of birth and birth master. I didn't give myself this name. Okay, because I ain't named my own stuff. I was just walking in the earth as a yielded vessel with a revelation that God gave me on birthday. That's it. I said, who are you? I can talk to me if you want to, but I'm here to help set you free. Okay? And then Apostle Moses, my spiritual mother, said in prayer one day, God told her to name me birth master. That's how I obtained birth master. I didn't name myself. Too many people try to name themselves. <laughs> I didn't name myself. Okay. No, it, yeah, God told Adam to name, but he had someone to tell him to name. Okay. In other words, it brings a certain order to something that when you put your hands on it, it's legal. And so when I put my hands on it, it becomes legal. 
Especially when I kept my heart here in the first place. Okay? And so I can give myself this name. And so it was placed up on me, but I accepted and received my assignment in the earth. Okay? And so when people come to things like this right here, they be like, what? I don't know why I got the rebirth in beings over here. They for you. Okay? And I understand you, but I was once you. Okay, I was once, because I said, God, listen, there got to be more to God. There's more to you than this. And if I can't find more to you than this right here, look, I might as well just, you know, selling drugs was, you know, was pretty profitable. Come on, come on. And y'all don't want to be you know? The end results may have been bad, but it was real profitable. <laughs> hey, you know, I did. VIP every once in a while do feel good. <laughs> I'm just saying. So can you please bring me to the kingdom to start my entrepreneurship the right way? Yeah. <laughs> so he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what I'm you, you come on in and show you. How, I, no man taught me this. No, no man taught me this. I, I wish I've had some great people in my life, but no man taught me this right here. Okay, so this did not, it came from really just getting in a place on the floor with God, seeking, like, God, what, what's, why my stomach hurting so bad? Like, all these pains that I'm having, what is all of this that I'm having? Yeah. Then in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the pushing, seeing thousands of people going, hell, hell, wait, God, what is this? That's where you're all at today. So while they're playing right there, let me just release this to you is that you've come here to bring it into reality. You've come into your cowboy's hour. In other words, tell somebody, I've superseded chromos time, ordinary time, scheduled time, time clocks, calendars. I'm on, I'm on cables, cowboy's time, time of delivery, time to come forth, divine time. My midwife is here, my nurse is here. My prophetic intercessor is here. My skilled surgeon is here. Everything I need is here on today to help me bring forth that which I've been carrying that will make an impact in the earth, cause great change, bring reformation, transformation unto the body of Christ. And if you're ready for that, then tell somebody, don't shut out. Don't shut out. No, tell them, don't shut. Don't shut. What, God what God wants revealed. Wants revealed. Yeah. So don't shut what God wants revealed. And that's why I say people want to shut birthing down. Yeah. Because some don't ever want you to come into the revelation and the revealing of who you are. So what is this? What were we? What are we in today? Why is it called the birthing room? Why is it called the birthing room? Why? Okay. So it's the place where your picture that you've been seeing in your mind is the picture that manifests, that becomes clear, visible, and then it becomes true. It's true. All of y'all that came when Jalen was speaking about the marketplace and said, how do I do this? How do I do this? I was just sitting on my seat. I said, ooh, it ain't my time yet. Go, Jayla, go tell them. And after you tell them, then I'm going to give it, I'm going to bring them into the existence of the thing. The reality of the thing. So go on, stir them up, lead them, come up with positive power, restructure them, get them, get them together. And then I'm going to go on, amen, bring them on into it. Okay? Go help, go on, administrator, administrate them. Help me out, be the administrator. And then we're going to go and bring this thing into true reality. You didn't come here just to hear. Listen, we're beyond going to summits like this to be blessed. If you came here to be blessed, just bless. Let me shoot you, amen. You came here to be restructured. Tell somebody the birthing room is all about restructuring. Amen. Amen. So we came into a place that has been created as a natural place. Yes, it is a lot of things going on, amen? Because, amen, even when we do it, did this right here this year, I kept seeing a lot of things. I saw the Ark of the Covenant, and then I said, we saw the I said, well, I'm not going to do the birthday room this year. I'm not, then, you know, get these inboxes. It's the birthday room this year. Uh, 
I don't know about the birthing room. And the Lord said, no, 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 that's your brand. You can never not do the birthing room because that's what I called you to do. Amen. Though others come and they're going to prepare your rooms, that when the birthing room comes, it's going to make it easy for us that's on your labor team. Amen, somebody. It's going to make it real, real easy because you're going to already be ready, be ready, be ready. You didn't drive thousands of miles, even fly in hundreds of miles. Amen. To Lee say that was a phenomenal word. Now what do I do with it? What do I so you leave here and you say, well, next week I'm going to this other summit or this other conference. Uh, no, no, no. Listen, ain't no wrong. I'm all for conferences and summits. But I want you to know when you leave here that you have clarity. And next year when you come, I want you to come testify. Listen, this is my baby right here. Give me a business card, put it in my hand. This is what I birthed out right here. I birthed this out here. And that's what's going to happen for many people sitting up under the side of my voice today. God is going to show you. So when it comes to birthing, you can't listen to the voice of the flesh. Don't listen to the voice of the flesh, the voice of reason. Don't listen to it. It'll mess you up. Sometimes the voice of the flesh is a person sitting there saying, what's that? What's that? Girl, get out of my ear. Stop. Hey, hey, hey. Dude, dude, chill. I'm trying to get something. You know what amazes me is that so many men are impregnated but don't know how to birth out. Because they think we're crazy for doing something like this right here. What are you talking about? That's a natural thing. Only, you know what? But I thought you told me you was a believer. Because then there is neither there is neither male nor female, Jew nor Gentile. Okay, so you got so many men that have a womb and they're barren. Okay? And you wonder why your wife is frustrated with you, your kids is frustrated with you, you're frustrated with yourself. Because you need to birth out that that's inside of you. Oh, but I'm a man. I'm a man. You are a man. We don't take that away from you. You are mankind. Okay? But if you would tap into the spirit realm and become open to the Holy Spirit, amen, how do you know you're a believer? By faith, you believe. So when I when I start going to different places and I, I start talking, and then the men started birthing, it, it was phenomenal to see these men on the floor, to see these men on the birthing table. It, it, it was phenomenal to see a man on the floor. I, I mean, I was like, oh my God. It set him free. And that's what God want to do for all of us together. I told you, no child left behind. We were created, given a command to be fruitful and multiply. Y'all don't know that? So birthing was in the existence from the beginning. We were created to be fruitful and multiply. Come on, you say they have dominion in the earth. How can you have dominion in the earth, amen, if dominion is locked inside of you? You got your dominion locked inside of you. You don't have dominion in the earth. So to fulfill it, that prophetic destiny, we got to understand and know how to utilize the process. Okay? You and I were created for productivity. We were created to reproduce in the earth. So what is the birth of you? It is a kingdom mandate to push you, to awaken you, the people of God, to come forth in that which they've been called to do. What I'm doing right here, it defies religion. It strips the mask of religion off. And it sends you back out in the earth as a sent one, saying, look, I'm carrying out what God called me to do, not from a religious place, not from a, 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 a defiant place, but from a place that says, wait a minute, I know who I am now. I know my, I mean, do you know your purpose right now? Okay, so you say, I know my purpose, but do you know it right now? What's your next place when you leave here? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you leave here? And everything that you've got, what are you going to do with it when you leave here? That's what we want to bring into reality. Right here at this moment. That we bring this part into reality. 
that it's no longer just a locked up mystery in your head that you can't figure out how to get in the earth. Tell somebody what it's revealed. It's made known. It's open to you. How many you need it to be made open to you today? To be made you know, I, I, I need it to be made known. Apostle Powell and I was sharing, and she said something like, the broken room, it, it, it looks like to me like a microscope. In other words, we brought it into existence like a microscope. You know how, what a microscope is for? Okay? That what's invisible to the natural eye, you put it under a microscope, those little tiny, tiny particles and things that you can't see with the microscope, a microscope enlarges it. And then it makes it visible to the human eye. You say, wow. You mean that little thing got all of that in it? Amazing. So the birthing room becomes like a microscope that you're now placed upon it now. I said, okay, now let me in. What's here, no one has ever saw before. It ain't never been seen. What you about to burn has never been seen in the earth. If ever there was a time that we needed understanding about birth, it is right now. Because why? Why, why, why carry all of those things inside of you, those businesses? Why carry everything inside of you? Leave this earth and you just become someone that somebody do. That's not why you, that's not why God called you to the kingdom and saved you. No. So we become an apostolic prophetic people. This, this one here that I'm talking really. So here we are in the birthing room. Okay? It's going to show us how to fulfill command to be fruitful in that which of God has called us to do. Number one, the first part of birthing. Somebody said the first part is having a revelation and a conviction of God. The revelation is what I'm trying to give you. She gave me the purpose. Do you know your purpose? Why are you called? Do you know your purpose? What's your purpose for being at a rising point? I do nothing without purpose. It got, I got to have a purpose to it. Okay? If you tell with those that do come. Because I realize, listen, everybody can't come in this birthday room in the first place. Because it's so sterile. It's very sterile. It is a sterile atmosphere. You're right. We labor so long. We we travail. And, and we, we travail and labor for the purity. That no witch, warlock, no kind of spirit, no scanning spirit. You're not talking to me. Can ever come in here and try to scan out and try to uh, stop that which God is doing. So it becomes a very pure atmosphere. Very pure, very pure. That the hands touch you up here. Listen, I've had pastors, leaders come and lay on this birthday table that was about to take their own lives. I really feel like some of those that took their lives, if I could have met them, they wouldn't have took their lives. They wouldn't have took their lives because I would have showed them, no, 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 you're not depressed. You need somebody to help you put you on a birthday bed and say, push all that good stuff out, push it out, push it out, push it out, push it out. You're going to live and not die. Your destiny is greater than dying. What God has called you to do is greater than dying. I'm sorry for all the ones you thought that were supposed to understand you that don't understand you. But I understand. Ain't no jealousy, no competition. Amen. You got a vision inside of you. And souls are waiting on you. You can't die. You can't die. Amen. You can't die. Let me bring my team to you. Let us, amen, help you in this thing that you're called to do, which is ministry. That I've made you feel like that I've crushed your heart, broke you, hurt you, made you, reduced you down to nothing. So that's what it's all about. 
So we understand that once a while. We understand that. And so that's the first part is having that conviction. So what's your purpose in the body of Christ? Arise and pray. This purpose is we are spiritual birth and center, a womb in the body of Christ. We are a womb. You say, what am I sitting in now? You're sitting in a womb. Yeah. You're sitting in a womb. Well, how can I perceive that? <laughs> By the Spirit. You're sitting in a, you, do you know what it feels like to sit in the womb of God? So what does it feel like to sit in the womb of God? You're feeling it right now. Yeah. Oh God, I feel anointed. You're, you're sitting in the God, I'm in the womb. That's the safest place. Oh, that's the best place. Is to say, can, can nothing unclean touch you in the womb of God? Nothing, nothing. You don't even have to worry about it. No evil thing can be spoken to you because you're in the womb of that you to pray for it. You want it to be there. It's a place that heals you. Sit in the womb of God. Say, when God told us this was the womb, you know, we just came in here and sat down and in this style. Who got it? Took advantage of we we just sat down and sit in the womb. God, this is what it feel like to sit in your womb. This is what it feel like to sit in divine in something that was not touched by human hands. God, we can't even leave here, God. And every time we come try to step out the womb, the feeling of it say, get back in. And we just get back in it. Because in the womb, you learn how to have a divine encounter with God. Tell somebody next to you, say, you better get in the womb. Not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit. So to get in the womb, get in the womb, get past your mind. Get, get back now. You didn't have time to figure it out. You didn't have time. You didn't have time. Listen, that's what some of our kids need to learn to get in the womb to get their scholarships. Get in the womb. Get in the womb. Mama ain't got the money, but get in the womb. <laughs> get in the womb. Ooh, God, Jesus. Because I said there was no age to spiritual birth. And it's, it's not determined by age. It's not determined by gender. No, it's determined by, amen. When you get in the spiritual womb of God, and amen, hear the in There he reveals his mind to you. What's the mind of God concerning my next move? That's why, what's the mind of God? What's the mind of God? Should I take this business idea? Should I take this business proposition or not? Is this you, God? What is it, God? God is saying, you know what? I'm trying to birth something in you first. Let me birth you out first, and then you won't have an understanding if the business proposition is yours or not. Then once you birth to that, stay with God's purpose no matter what. Make a commitment to stay in God's purposes no matter the challenges. Somebody say stay in God's purpose. No matter the challenge. Because you're going to have some challenge with what you birth out. Everybody ain't going to be happy and everybody not going to believe about what you birth out. They're not happy for it. Because she said there's a restoration upon what you birth out then the greater glory of God is going to come up on you in this season for what you birth out. That you don't compare your losses. Your losses will not compare to what you're about to birth out in this hour. Amen. The losses will not compare to it. Somebody say they will not compare to what you birth out. Amen. So the conception, conception takes place through intimacy. Intimacy, intercession brings such an intimacy to us. Then we are where we are now. It's that called travail. Somebody say travail. Travail and intercession are two totally different things. And travail, you feel the pains. And intercession, you're intimate. And then once you birth it out, so once you birth it out, you gotta keep praying over it. You gotta war over it. You gotta nurture it. And you gotta protect it. If you don't do those things, guess what will happen? It won't last very long. When you leave 
out of you after you birth out, you'll be challenged on what you birth out. You'll be challenged on. Charity is your time to birth out. It's all over you. A, a greater dimension of what you're operating in that you could never, it hasn't even been told yet what you're getting ready to do and how God is going to highlight your name and highlight your story. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's your time. It's your time. Your hour. You're in your Kairos time right now. You superseded the Kronos. Everything you've been doing up until now was to prepare you for this moment right here. Because God allows things to happen to prepare us for the moment. And so everything that's been happening, Cherry, was to prepare you for right now. We ain't even talked in a long time, but I'm telling you, I see God just using you. Greater. Because who better to tell somebody than somebody that went through it? So I'm going to tell you. You know, what? You know the, the insensitivity sometimes, don't want to recognize. Do you realize you're sitting there so miracle? I wasn't even supposed to be here today. I wasn't even supposed to be here today. Then he wanted me to abort my life a long time ago. He wanted somebody else to abort my life a long time ago. Do you realize why the relationship, he couldn't kill me? Do you realize why it couldn't tell me? She couldn't kill me. She couldn't even do it. Nothing could do it. Because why? I was going to come to this hour right here where I had to birth out. That's right. Now you're going to birth out what's going to reshape the world. That's it. I mean, reshape. I see you going into like Hollywood endless. Because people in Hollywood are struggling with mental health. And they need somebody who got a skill, who is skillful to come in and minister the word of truth until they won't go back and tell all their business. But help them. And then you'll be able to introduce them to God also. Okay? And then you can come they're going to make you a very wealthy woman. Wealth is all up over in charity. It's like ancient money I see from her. Old money that your family had to See, I didn't come from it. I am enough. So when you go to Hollywood, you're not going to need you already know. And they just connected with the wealth that's upon you. <coughs> it's your hour of birth. Tell somebody my hour has come. My hour has come. My hour has come. I want everybody to stand. My hour has come. Standing keys of revelation. I'm going to open up to you the keys and mysteries of heaven like never before. That's going to be open unto you that when you stand before people, you're going to present, amen, the truth unto them that will cause them, amen, to say, I want the God that that woman is preaching about. You're going to cause them to have such a passion for God, a passion for the righteousness of God, the holiness of God. And that is what God is going to open you up to in this hour. There is more parts to you than what we saw today. We only got a glimpse of what God is doing in your life. Yes, yes, yes. You have not been out in the forefront on, amen, his timetable, upon his calendar. And sure as we're standing here, glory to God, your name will be known for the righteousness and the holiness of God.
wonder when God sent me in a place like that. You ever been sitting in a place with a bunch of religion? <laughs> and you like, Ooh, what am I doing here? It's so that you, God has given you the keys to help bring truth. Yeah, yeah. Now bust them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does it in some of the uncommon ways. How is it God will sit you in the midst of a funeral in a religious setting and say, preach a word that's going to bring them into truth that really has nothing to do with a funeral. That's what he's about to do today. But are you ready? No, for real. Are you really ready? So say, I, I'm a key. And he's releasing a key. Your key. Your key. Every time the enemy try to lie to you, wave your key in front of you. Wave your key in front of you. And say, I'm a key. Now we, we, we're about to get into the break. I know that's what y'all are in anticipation of. You're in anticipation of that. So let down my curtains, please. I had to, listen, a lady was on, she said, Look, I want to get on that birthing bed there, but I don't want this to be seen. I said, that's fine. Birthing's never really seen like that. Because sometimes God don't want you to see what he wants people to see. Amen. Because of the effect it has. Thank you for lowering that. Woo, God, I feel the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Say we get real, real right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Tell somebody, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Amen. Amen. It won't take very long. Hallelujah. Uh, but before you do, I'm telling you, before we go here, uh, I want to do this one part. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I want to do this one part before we do go into that. I want us, amen. I don't know. Listen, we still got to take care of our business matters, and I want to take care of that to make sure that we